come down this little alleyway and sitting here like in a little slice of local Chinese life. So across here we have a stall where local people would buy all of their Chinese kind of ceremonial things. Now this dish historically was a dish that Chinese laborers uh, would order and eat because obviously you know it was very cheap. There's a high amount of noodle and carbs, small amount of meat, uh, a little bit of vegetables as well. I've got choy sum here. Now the noodles themselves, egg noodles that have been tossed in a little bit of the braising liquid from the pork and the pork on the top here has been braised as well. So I want to go in here and try this. I think for me like a lot of times you think about street food and you think of so much action and fire and lots of flavor and chili and all these things that's kind of the idea of what you have of thai street food right but sometimes the beauty is in the really simple things like noodles like this that are cooked to perfection springy uh, you know i can taste the actual noodle themselves and just a whisper of that kind of like fatty pork kind of flavor uh, like around the noodle it's beautifully simple and, and delicious. Ah, that pork is really tender. Just a little bit sweet, but again, it just tastes of itself. This dish is simplicity in its most beautiful state. I mean, the ingredients themselves are very humble. Egg noodles, some green vegetables, some pork, but the way we cook it and the attention to detail, now that's what makes this dish really special. So come with me, my friends. We are gonna make bami japgang. The thing that stood out the most to me when I was eating this dish in Chinatown was actually the amount of noodles in the bowl. The noodles from the street vendor were actually homemade. So it is really important that you do find some fresh Chinese egg noodles that are really high quality. So head to your Asian grocer to find them. But the point is that you want a lot of noodles. So if you have a look here, I have a massive, massive plate of noodles here. So I wanted to talk noodles first of all, because they are to me the most important part of the dish. But the other important part is the pork itself. So I'm going to be using some pork shoulder here. Pork shoulder is a secondary cut, so it's going to kind of tenderize and get really lovely and soft in our braising liquid. So start off just with some boiling water, add in your pork. And for the aromatics, I have some coriander root. Now what I do want to do here is bruise this so it releases more of its flavor. And then some garlic. And they go in with my pork. I've also got some white peppercorns. Now, I think in Thailand here, we do use a lot more white peppercorn than we do black peppercorn. It's something I've always taken for granted. My mum has always done the same thing, but I was thinking about it the other day and I thought it was worth explaining that with the white peppercorn, you kind of get, it's a little bit more of a milder pepper flavor rather than black peppercorn, which has a very sharp astringent flavor. It's kind of just like a characteristic flavor that we use a lot in Thai cooking. So there you go, white peppercorns and some soy sauce. Bring that up to a boil, put the lid on and let that simmer away for two hours. All right, things are smelling very, very good in my kitchen right now. And at this point, one really big tip here, guys, is to let the pork cool down actually in this braising liquid. I think that keeps the pork a lot more tender and keeps it a lot juicier as well. So I've turned the heat off and I'm gonna let that pork cool down completely in here and then we can slice and get our noodle bowl ready. At this point, my pork has cooled down, and this is something you could do the day before you wanted to do this dish as well. Break it down into more manageable chunks. It's gonna make some nice slices here. Oh, look at that, you can just see how tender that pork is. Yum, smells beautiful. The cooking liquid itself needs to be strained and just save that for later. And now let's talk about vegetables. So here in Thailand, this is a very common vegetable we call guangdong. And you might know it elsewhere in the world, in Australia or the US, as choy sum. I think a really good way to preserve its color and its crunch 
is to do a little bit of an extra step in the technique of cooking it here. And you want like a pretty big, like two handful kind of bunch of your choy sum here. Cook that in the boiling water for like literally 30 seconds or so. I wanna keep this nice and crunchy. Then decant into a bowl of ice water. This really lets the flavor of the vegetable shine. It crisps it up, keeps it nice and green. It's optional if you just wanna cook your vegetable, put it straight onto your noodle bowl. Hey, I'm okay with that. Squeeze out most of the water from the vegetables and then you've got your pork and your greens ready to go. Okay, my friends, we are now at the most critical part of the recipe. I don't wanna scare you or anything, but everything here has to happen very quickly in order for it all to work together into that beautiful symphony of flavors at the end that I wanna create. So pop your noodles into the boiling water and again, don't overcook anything here. Oh, 30 seconds, literally. You can time it if you want to. Is that 30 seconds? Is that 30 seconds you're okay, <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> trust is counting. Okay, trust. Three, two, one. All right, let's go. Put them into large bowl. Sprinkling of sugar now. Add in half a cup of the cooking liquid from the pork. Give that a really good mix and then add in a tablespoon of pork lard. You can get pork lard from your supermarket, typically in the fridge section near the butter, but just let it soften up and turn into a bit of a liquid form before you add it in here. This is the secret ingredient, right? That's gonna give you that authentic flavor. Toss everything together and keep tossing until all the noodles are beautifully coated. That looks so good. It smells really good too. Pop your noodles onto your serving bowl. I need some pork, green vegetables. And that, my friends, looks deceptively simple, but oh my goodness, the flavor here. I'm very excited. Now what I would do if I was on the street eating this is use my little set of condiments here, which you always find on the table. I've got some chili powder, a little bit of fish sauce, Wow, guys, if you're gonna make one simple noodle dish, this has to be the one. Mm. You know if I'm slurping and making noises, it's good. 